All right, Pearl, I'm starting. All right, go ahead. Cool. All right, um, very, a very, very, very good morning to you guys. Um, welcome to our STEM lockdown digital school. Welcome to Natural Science Grade 6. It is always a pleasure having you guys, and at least now we're back on Zoom. Um, I hope you guys had an awesome uh, break yesterday and enjoyed your Freedom Day, and you kind of, you know, remembered why we were celebrating the day. Um, just to remind you who I am, for those who do not know me, I am Karabo Fiona Khashani. I go by KB underscore Khashani on Instagram and Karabo Fiona Khashani on Facebook. Please do remember to follow us on social media. Um, the links and the hashtags will be followed at the end of the slide. Uh, please do have your notebooks and your pencils and all of that you need to take down notes. Please do stop me at any time should you feel that I'm going too fast or you've got any questions. Um, do write those questions in your chat box. Please keep, please can you mute your microphones because some of you are talking right now. Um, Pearl, if you can help me please on that side. All right, um, so please just keep your chat related to the lessons. Only ask questions related to the lesson in your chat. Please avoid um, any vulgar words or just misbehaving or you will be kicked out of the session and that would not be very nice. All right, so without wasting any time, guys, let's get straight into it. All right, so at the end of the lesson, we are basically going to discuss the mains of electricity and where does it come from. We are going to learn about what our fossil fuels and how did they form underground. We're also going to discuss why we see energy and how can we do it. All right, and we're also going to discuss why are illegal electrical connections so dangerous. And lastly, we're going to talk about the differences between renewable and non-renewable energy. So it is going to be a bit of a lengthy lesson today, and it is actually going to comment throughout this week. Um, in terms of electricity, energy, and just being able to save electricity. So just do tune in every day to just get to the important parts of the lesson. All right. All right, so we've got some new words that we're going to focus on, All right? And we're going to start off with fossil fuels. Just in your chat box, just give me the first word that comes to mind when you think of fossil fuels. In your chat box, what comes to mind? I'm going to wait for your answers in the chat box. What comes to mind when you think of fossil fuels? I'll give you a couple of seconds to just answer that. All right, I see Loazi saying coal, a dial, coal, all the way to old things. All right, cool. You might have the dot. All right, very good. Okay, what about the word coal? Comes when you think about uh, when I think coal, I think of I am thinking meat, I'm thinking fire. What about you? Um, so imperial oil, we've got coal coming in. All right, cool, guys, awesome. All right, great stuff. Thank you for those answers. All right, the next thing we have is oil. All right, we're going to be discussing oil as a new word as well. Natural gas, power station, turbine, and generate, and lastly, renewable. All right, so please just write down your new words. Um, this is actually going to form... Okay, 
Um, so please just write down these words and we're going to discuss the meanings in tomorrow's lesson that is going to go as your homework. I'm just going to give you a couple seconds just to copy down those words. Fossil fuels all the way to non-renewable and that is going to be homework for tomorrow. You need to find the meaning of those words. You could use your textbook. Usually at the back of your textbooks, there are meanings of the words. Or for those of you who've got dictionaries, you're more than welcome to use your dictionary. Or of course, those who've got access to the internet, that would also be a great idea. All right. Right, moving on. Um, if you do need me to go back, you'll just let me know, all right? And we'll go back to that slide. All right. So introduction. Now, we are used to just switching on electrical appliances that you hardly think um, what makes it possible to have these things, all right? So when we switch on a heater, we don't even think as to how is it possible that that heater can just heat up the entire room, all right? Now, our focus turns to appliances that need mains of electrical supply. When we talk about an electrical supply, we're talking about the mains electricity, where exactly the electricity comes from. Um, so I want you to just give me a list of any appliances in your home that use up electricity. So what do you have in your home that needs electricity for it to function? So just in your chat box, just tell me what is in your home that needs, that needs electricity. All right, Tristan says a heater, loisy, a TV. Zamil, computer, Tristan, PlayStation 4, all the way to saying a TV. All right, awesome, guys. Keep those answers coming in. All right, JD, a kettle, Ndimbas, also a kettle, Luangler, a stove, laptop, kettle, stove, blender. Awesome stuff. These answers are amazing. Fan, laptop, toaster, TV. All right, great stuff. Phone, stove, microwave. All right, awesome. So if you look at the picture on your bottom left, that is just basically pictures of different appliances that need electricity to work. Now, the big question that we have here is, like, is where does mains electricity come from? So the power stations that you see sometimes, how is it that they're actually getting electricity? So we're going to work through our today's lesson discussing the mains electricity. All right. All right, let's discuss stored energy. Now, a battery has stored energy which can, which can provide electrical energy. All right, for example, when you charge your phone, um, it's obviously used by a battery. Um, now, as soon as that battery is flat, the phone will probably go off. And for you to charge your battery, you would need to connect it to an electrical socket, all right, to restore the stored energy in the battery to make the phone work. Um, however, though, our homes, schools, shops, and factories cannot run on batteries because they cannot store or provide large amounts of energy. Now, imagine for those of you who've got computers in your schools, now imagine the computer center. Imagine that entire communi uh, community, sorry. Imagine that entire computer center running from a battery, all right? that's going to need a lot of energy and a lot of stored energy, which cannot be able to sustain the computers running. That's why for computers and for our homes and all these other electrical appliances, we would need electricity to keep them running. All right. We use electricity every day. The main supply of electrical energy is from power stations. That's what we rely on for our electricity. We are relying on power stations. That is a very, very important word, which I need you to note down, that we rely on power stations for our electricity. All right, please just remember to just write down your notes. Um, it will be a bit hard for you to copy note, um, word for word, so just do summarize, but the videos are gonna be available for you to reference from. All right, now the power stations, we actually call them mains electricity. Now that is exactly where the electricity comes from, from the main, all right. Power stations also need a source of energy to make electricity. 
in South Africa, this is mostly from fossil fuels. All right, so basically we rely a lot on fossil fuels to supply us with electricity. Our power stations burn off fossil fuels to supply our homes, our schools, our streets, our communities with electricity. All right, moving on to the next slide. All right, what exactly are fossil fuels? Now, fossil fuels could be coal, oil, and natural gas, right? These three are what we call fossil fuels, right? So when you think of fossil fuels, you really do need to think of coal, oil, and natural gas. Some people think that fossil fuels are remains of dead dinosaurs, but this is not true. Right, so when we think of fossil fuels, people really do think of dead dinosaurs from years and years ago, but it's not the case, all right? But however, though, when we speak of the word fossil, we are, of course, talking about the remains of animals that existed very, very long time ago. But in terms of fossil fuels, not necessarily, okay? Um, so most of the fossil fuels we find today were formed millions and millions of years before even the first dinosaurs. So fossil fuels existed way before the dinosaurs. All right, so millions and millions of years ago. So fossil fuels were actually once alive, All right? So the electricity that we're busy burning off comes from fossil fuels of um, creatures that were actually once alive. Right now, in South Africa, we use three main fossil fuels. We use coal, oil, and natural gas. Please remember that and note that down. All right, so in South Africa, we use three main fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas. Fossil fuels are the remains of prehistoric organisms that lived long ago. Now, you know, there's a joke I always have with my friends that, oh my goodness, you're such a fossil or now you're turning into a fossil, you know, because my friends are getting older, you know, so it's just a little joke about fossils because fossils are very, very old. So now I'm not saying now go call your friends fossils, that wouldn't be very, very nice. But when we talk about fossils, we're talking about something that existed and lived a very, very long time ago, okay? Um, so when coal is burnt, it is actually the remains of pre- historic organisms. Fossil fuels are non-renewable, all right? So once we've burnt that specific fossil fuel, we cannot reburn it again. Um, this means that they cannot be replenished, made again in a short period of time and come out of the ground. So now if non-renewable means that they cannot be replaced or made again, who can tell me then what is a renewable source of energy? What would then be renewable? What is renewable? What is renewable? If non-renewable refers to something that can be um, that cannot be made again, non-renewable, what would then be renewable? Lozi says reusable. Okay. Anybody else? What is renewable. Ndovu says a source that can be made again. All right, okay. Anybody else? All right, I see Luande raised up. I'm not sure if we're talking about a he or a she, but Luande. Um, Luande, what is renewable? Uh, Ma'am, a renewable is something that you can use again. Okay, very good. Thank you, Lanjay. Thank you very, very much. All right, thank you for that answer. All right. And I see some of you are also saying that Abu says it's renewable. Very good. So you guys actually do have an idea of what renewable means. It means that we can actually use it again. It can be replaced. All right. Good stuff. All right. 
Now, a renewable energy resource such as solar, the sun heat and wind are replenished naturally and do not come from the ground. All right. All right, let's just do this very, very quick activity before we move on. The first one says, so this is basically true or false, and you need to tell me whether it's true or false. So number one, fossil fuels are the remains of prehistoric organisms that lived long ago. Is that true or is that false? Just in your chat, let me know, is that true or false? While we just wait for those answers, I see also Mukona saying that it means something that is renewable. Very, very good. All right, a lot of answers coming in and a lot of you are saying true. And you guys are correct. That is true. They are remains of prehistoric organisms that lived long ago. What about the next one? Fossil fuels are renewable source of energy. The key word here is renewable. Fossil fuels are renewable source of energy. All right, and I see a lot of you saying false. We've got Dobu, Ndando, Zamil, Abu, Razi, false, false, false. And Google it, so we've got false, false, false. All right, let's find out. Very, very good. Well done, that is false. Number two, coal is used for electricity. Is that true or is that false? Coal is used for electricity. All right, let's find out. All right, a lot of you are saying true. Very good. Coal is definitely used for electricity. What about number four? In South Africa, fossil fuels gives our power stations energy. In South Africa, fossil fuels give our power station energy. What do we have? All right, I see a lot of you saying true. All right, very, very good. Excellent, guys. Number five, a renewable energy source is oil. So with oil, is oil renewable? True or false? Is oil renewable? Samuel says false, Ndimbas. All right, a lot of you are saying false. Let's find out. Very good, false, all right. We're almost coming to the end of this activity. Um, number six, another word for decaying is fresh. Now, decaying basically means to slowly die out. All right. So basically, not like you could say decomposing. So another word for decaying is fresh. What do we have? Um, all right. I see these answers coming in. False, 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 false. All right. Let's find out. Very good, definitely. Decaying is definitely not fresh. In fact, it's anything but fresh. When something decays, it's definitely just getting very rotty, smelly, and um, no longer fresh at all. All right, the last one, the biological process of fossil fuels takes millions of years. Biological, meaning the natural process of fossil fuels, take millions of years. True or false? All right, I see a lot of you are saying true. All right, very good. All right, and the very, 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 very last one, the advantage of fossil fuels is that they are inexpensive. So fossil fuels are inexpensive, meaning they are cheap. Yes, or true or false? Let's see what we got. Um, some of you are saying true, false. Okay, some of you are saying true and false. Let us find out. All right, oops, sorry guys. All right, definitely true. All right, 
fossil fuels are inexpensive. Remember, they are just dead prehistoric organisms. All right, so um, very, very inexpensive. All right, thank you guys. You guys did so well in that activity. Thank you so, so much. All right, let us move on. All right, now, so fossil fuels are actually the remains of prehistoric organisms that lived millions of years ago. So now we know that fossil fuels lived ages and ages ago. Um, different fossil fuels come from different organisms that formed in slightly different ways. Right, then we've got Johnny over here that says, wow, that is actually amazing. So the coal that we burn was actually a real tree millions of years ago. Guys, all right, so, all right, and I see a lot of you are actually saying that you got eight out of eight, seven out of eight. Well done, guys. Hey, you guys deserve a high five, hey? High five to all of you. All right, awesome stuff, guys. All right, um, so fossil fuels actually are organisms that have formed in many different ways and from long, long ago. All right. All right. Now, think about this. Let's, I want you to just imagine what life was like three million, 300 million years ago. Imagine how life was 300 million years ago. Okay. Now, think about what the earth must have looked like back then. Probably swamps and marshes everywhere, and it was warmer than it is today. Now, we spoke about swamps and marshes in our previous lesson sometime last week um, when we were speaking about um, wetlands. I don't know if you guys, some of you, I think some of you actually in that lesson, we spoke about wetlands, and one of the wetlands that we spoke about were marshes and swamps. All right, um, Google it. I see that you've raised your hand, but I think you've taken it back down. Yeah, Google it seems to have taken hand. All right, um, Dimbas, do you have a question or something that you'd like to say? Uh, Ma'am, uh, if the dinosaurs got extinct, what, what type of meteor, was it a meteor or meteorite that made them go extinct? I missed that last part of your question. I just heard meteorites. Please just repeat yourself. Was it a meteor or a meteorite that made them all extinct? That made what extinct? All the dinosaurs and the prehistoric creatures. All right, thank you. I will answer you shortly. Thank you so much, Ndimbas, for that answer, for that question. All right, so Ndimbas is asking, was it meteors or meteorites that made dinosaurs extinct? Now, that's a very, very good, uh, very, very good question. I'm going to have to just read up about that just to give you an accurate answer as to was it exactly meteors or meteorites. Um, but we first need to obviously understand the differences between a meteor and a meteorite. So as soon as I get that answer for you in Dimbas, I will definitely let you know. Thank you so much for that question, though. All right. And I will give you an answer. All right. All right, now ancient trees, ferns, and plants grew everywhere. Now, very weird looking animals roamed the earth and even stranger looking fish lived in the rivers and deep in the oceans and seas. Now you can imagine now all this coal and all the fossil that we're busy burning are from creatures that were very weird looking and animals that obviously roamed the earth 300 million years ago. So we need to now remember that we're discussing what life was like 300 million years ago. Now, when these prehistoric plants and animals died, their bodies decomposed just in the same way as organisms decompose today. So firstly, now in Dimbas, to answer the question would be that all these prehistoric plants and animals died. All right. Now, we'd obviously need to find out as to what exactly was it that caused their bodies to die or what caused them to die. But over time, then their bodies decomposed. Um, just the same way that um, bodies decompose today. All right. Now, the dead organisms became buried under layers and layers of mud, rock, sand, and water. So obviously, it took a while for all of these organisms to decompose. It took layers of all sorts of um, substances, mud, rock, and sand, 
to actually get all of these organisms to decompose. All right. Over time, these layers built up and became very deep and they pushed down with a great pressure on the layers below it. Now, I want you to just imagine all these organisms lying on the ground and as they decompose, they obviously end up going deeper and deeper into the ground, obviously pushed by the pressures of the earth and the atmosphere. All right. Now, millions of years passed and dead plants and animals slowly decomposed and formed fossil fuels. So now we know that all these animals decomposed. Um, they ended up being going all the way underground with all these layers of mud and sand. Eventually, they decomposed, forming what is called fossil fuels. All right. Please just do write down what is important for you. You cannot obviously copy down word for word. All right, different types of fossil fuels were formed depending on different factors, right? So now basically depending on how they died, that would depend on the kind of fossil fuel that would have been produced. For example, whether it was the remains of plants or animals or a combination of both, um, how long the remains of the organisms had been buried for. Now, obviously, depending on how long these organisms were buried for would determine the kind of fossil fuel that would have been found over the years. All right. All right. And lastly, the type of fossil fuels that formed also depended on the temperature and the pressure conditions during the decay of the organisms. So now you can imagine if a dinosaur or some other creatures that may have um, decomposed over the years, depending on what the atmosphere looked like, depending on the pressures and the temperature of the environment would determine the kind of fossil fuel that we would use today for our electricity. All right. All right, now let's move on to oil and natural gas. Now, oil is a dark, thick liquid that can be used to make petrol to burn in vehicles such as cars, buses, and trucks. All right, natural gas is colorless and it is used mostly in homes for heating and cooking. Oil and natural gas formed from organisms uh, these are plants or animals that lived in the oceans before they were dinosaurs. Now, when these organisms died, they settled on the bottom of the riverbed or the ocean floor and the layers built up under mud and sand, what, which we call salt. The mud and sand slowly changed into rock and other rock and water pressure pushed down the remains of the dead plants and animals. Now, obviously, very similar to fossil fuels, when all your creatures and all your organisms die out and decompose and the pressures of the earth push them down into the ground. All right, now, over millions of years, um, you know, being under the heat and pressure, the dead plants and animals change into a thick liquid called crude oil. Have any of you heard of the word crude oil? All right. Um, you know, for those of you who maybe watch the news, you might find them saying crude oil. They say, you know, they speak a lot about crude oil, right? Now, in deeper, hotter places, tiny bubbles of natural gas formed. These were trapped under the rocks. So this is just the process of how oil actually came about as well as natural gas. Over time, some of the oil and natural gas began to work its way up through the rock and to the earth's crust and into rock formations called cap rocks. Today, most of the oil and natural gas is collected from these cap rocks by drilling down through the layers of rock. All right, now let's go on to coal. Now, I'm just, just giving you a couple pictures of some of the organisms that caused coal. Coal is a black rock that can be burnt to produce energy in power stations all 
over the word world sorry coal was formed from dead remains of trees ferns some other plants that lived 300 to 4 million years ago now this was when the earth was mostly covered in swampy forest all right a swamp a very it's a type of wetland that we spoke about previously like i said already Now, these kinds of plants were very different to the plants that we get today. So the plants that existed 300 to 400 million years ago are not actually very similar to what the kind of plants that we see today. All right. Um, over time, the layer of dead plants at the bottom of swamps was covered with layers of water and mud. The top layer squashed down on the dead plants. Over millions of years, the heat and pressure turned the plants into the coal that we mine today. So the coal that has actually been mined today um, actually comes from millions and millions of years ago, right? Which is why it's important to realize that it is not renewable and also very important to realize that we need to obviously save and not use up so much electricity. You know, their homes, I mean, many, probably many of you now in your homes have got so much stuff plugged in, a laptop, a charger, maybe a heater because it's a bit cold and maybe mom is cooking and maybe this is on and... You know, so all of these stuff are obviously consuming electricity, right? And obviously the more we use, then obviously the more coal is being burned up. All right. All right. The energy in coal originally comes from energy from the sun. Plants on earth use the energy of the sun for photosynthesis and obviously to grow. Now, it's not just the energy that we use that relies on the sun, but the plants as well, they rely on the sun for photosynthesis, which I know you know very, very well, because you know you have covered that um, in grade five, and we did touch a bit on that right towards the beginning, right? This energy was stored in the leaves, flowers, and stems of the plants. As the plants died, the energy was trapped. Right, so this is just discussing coal because we already mentioned at the beginning that South Africa relies on three um, fossil fuels, right? Oil, coal, and natural gas. All right, here's just a quick little activity for you. Now, I want you, now we, on, or, we already know that organisms, that fossil fuels were formed and lived many years ago and um, are different to the animals that we get to get to gay that we get today so basically very different to the organisms that we get today All right now who can remember how many millions of years ago was this when organisms actually formed fossil fuel all right i see abu raised their hand um let me just unmute you oops there we go. Yes, Abu. Yes. Uh, Your microphone isn't working properly. Sorry? Abu, can you... I can't hear what you're saying. Okay, I can't seem to get to Abu. All right. Um, Luande. Um, I think it was 300 million years ago very good Landley. excellent 300 million years ago now who can just give me a quick recap as to what happened three million years ago what was the world like 300 million years ago all right and all of you in the chat are also saying um i see dr carl r johnson Hey, doctor, saying 300 million years ago, all right, um, Simeka, 300 million years, all right, so a lot of you are actually getting 300 million years ago, very good, all right, what happened, what, what was the world like 300 million years ago, um, Zamil, I hope I pronounced that correctly, is it Zamil? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It's Zamili. Zamili, all right, got it. 300 years ago, there were swamps. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
you're a hundred percent correct. 300 million years ago, they were swamps. Excellent stuff. All right. Um, Ndimbas, again, yes. Um, Ma'am, I was going to ask, how did the coelacanth not become extinct? The what? The coelacanth. I'm not familiar with that word. You need to explain to me what that is. It's a type of fish. Okay. That, okay. Carry on. Because last year we learned about it and they said that in 2014 and 2015 mm -hmm. uh, in Durban they caught like two, two coelacanths. All right. Well, that's interesting. Um, what I do know about that is that, you know, it was considered a living fossil and that was very, very many years ago. Um, until then, scientists, you know, then discovered that it could be a very good fossil. As to how it died, I have no idea. I do not have the answer to that. But um, I can find out for you as to how the, 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 that specific fish died. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right. All right. I'm going to take the last hand, Abu. Abu, are you there? All right. Doesn't seem like it. All right, cool. All right. Um, all right, um, I see Mukwana saying that there were swamps. Very, very good. Um, iPhone saying that there were lots of swamps and lots of dinosaurs. Very, very good. All right, so obviously 300 million years ago, there was just, um, you know, swampy area, a lot of wetlands and very strange looking creatures. All right. Let's move on. All right, now this is just a very simple takeaway message. All right, now the way we obtain the different fossil fuels is also different. So now, obviously, we need to obviously extract these fossil fuels from the ground. Now, coal is usually obtained by digging mines into the rock and sand to reach um, to reach the coal deposits deep under the pressure under the surface so now we know we know that there are lots of fossils under the ground and special machines need to come in to be able to extract those fossils from underneath back onto the surface now this creates a huge hole in the surface of the earth um, as you can see the photograph of the man on your top left all right and maybe some of you can actually give an example of a very popular hole um, in south africa where um not specifically gold, <laughs> I just gave you the answer. Not specifically coal, but gold was actually dug out, coal, um, all right. Um, now, obviously this creates a hole in the surface of the earth, um, as you can see the picture on the top left. Now, oil and natural gases is obtained by drilling down through the rock. A hole is sunk with a huge drill so that the oil and natural gas can be reached and then brought up to the surface. Now, this normally takes place in the ocean. And as you can see, the oil rig in that picture below. All right, so you can tell me a very popular area where not coal, but rather gold was found. What is it called? Who remembers? Who knows what it was called? Who has an idea? Anybody? Starts with the K and ends with the Y. Who knows? Very, very big hole that was dug. Um, Ndovu, I think it is. So I pronounced it correctly, Ndovu. Ndovu. Yes. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. All right, great. Do you have the answer for me? Yes, ma'am. What is it? Yay, very, very good. Excellent stuff, right, Kimberly. So the big hole in Kimberley, very, very big hole, which is actually still there. In fact, maybe when you guys have a chance, you know, after this whole lockdown, you can actually just take a trip just to see the very big, the Kimberley's big hole. All right. All right, here's some helpful links for you. Um, you can read about fossil fuels on the following link. All right, it's just a very interesting read. And a video that you can find on YouTube that discusses fossil fuels. 
All right, very, very helpful links for you. So please do take those links down and just see what information that you can get from there. All right, a lot of you are also saying in your chat that Kimberly, very good. Mugona, Tristan. Then, all right, very, very good. Um, Sean says they, she, or sorry, he's seen it. Um, he has seen the big hole. All right, excellent stuff. All right, so next lesson, which is tomorrow, same time, 10 o'clock, we are going to be discussing um, moving on to fossil fuels and electricity and specifically the cost of electricity. It's very nice for us to switch on our heaters and air cons and charge our phones and have our laptops on, but actually we don't realize the cost of electricity. So do tune in tomorrow because we are going to discuss the cost of electricity. All right, um, for more information, you can always just contact me on my email at Africa, garabo at africateamgeeks.onmicrosoft.com. Please do follow us on social media. Um, the links are there on your screen. And remember to please do your homework for tomorrow. And that is the new words. We will discuss the new words for tomorrow's lesson. So please do do that. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and being such an awesome class today. Very well behaved. Thank you for your questions. And thank you so much for your answers. I will see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Bye, everybody.